Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good night, in any time and place. My name is Dita of Godland, or Dita Rietuma is my Roman name, and I'm here to bring to you today the very important letter of German and Californian bar lawyer Rainer Fulmish. The coronavirus scandal, a team of international lawyers, will discuss the largest wrongdoing in the history of humanity. This is a translation from English that I just made today with help of automatic Google translation from German to English. It is on approximately 10 pages and I will just go on and read it to you as I find this to be one of the most important documents right now because we are very obliged to stop this corona attack and massacre of humanity that is being done and conducted through this. So, so we go on. The coronavirus scandal, a team of international lawyers, will discuss the largest wrongdoing in the history of humanity. This article is on Rainer Formish website, which you will find under this video on the channel Indigenous Courts. So, the article starts. I am Rainer Fulmich and I have been a member of the bar in Germany and California for 26 years. I'm practicing the law mainly as an advocate against fraudulent companies such as Deutsche Bank, formerly one of the largest and most respected banks in the world, now one of the most toxic criminal organizations in the world as well as Volkswagen, one of the largest and most respected car manufacturers in the world previously, today known for its gigantic diesel fraud, as well as such company as Kone & Nagel, the world's largest shipping company, that we are suing in a multi-million dollar bribery case. I'm also one of four members of the German Coronavirus Investigative Committee. Since July the 10th, 2020, this committee has been listening to a large number of testimonies from international scientists and experts to find answers to the questions about the coronavirus crisis, which more and more people around the world are asking. All the aforementioned cases of corruption and fraud committed by German multinational pale in the face of the extent of the damage that the coronavirus crisis has caused and continues to cause. This coronavirus crisis, as we know today, must be renamed as the coronavirus scandal, and those responsible must be persecuted as criminals and sued for civil damages. On a political level, everything must be done to ensure that no one will ever again be in a position of power to defraud humanity or attempt to enslave us with their corrupt programs. And for this reason, I will now explain to you how and where an international network of lawyers will support this biggest tort case ever. Court case. The coronavirus fraud scandal, which has meanwhile turned into probably the biggest crime against humanity ever committed. Crimes against humanity were first defined in connection with the Nuremberg trials when they dealt with the leading war criminals of the Third Reich. 
Crimes against humanity are now regulated in Section 7 of the International Criminal Code. The three main questions to be answered in the context of a judicial approach to the corona scandal are Number 1. Is there a coronavirus pandemic or is there just a PCR test pandemic? In particular, does a positive PCR test result mean that the person tested is infected with COVID-19 or does it mean absolutely nothing in relation to an infection? Number two, do the so-called anti-corona measures such as lockdowns, mandatory face masks, unnecessary social distancing warrants and quarantine regulations serve to protect the world's population from the corona? Or these measures only serve to create panic so that people believe without question that their lives are in danger, in danger so that eventually the pharmaceutical and tech industries can generate huge profits from the sale of PCR tests. Antigen and antibody tests and vaccines as well as the collection of our genetic fingerprints, question mark. Number three. It is true that the German government has been under massive pressure from lobbies, more than any other country, from the main protagonists of this so-called corona pandemic, namely Mr. Drosten, virologist at the Charité Hospital in Berlin. Mr. Wheeler, veterinarian and head of the German equivalent of the CDC. The Robert Koch Institute and Mr. Tedros, head of the WHO. Because Germany is known as a particularly disciplined country and therefore had to become a model for the rest of the world for its strict and obviously successful adherence to anti-corona measures? Question mark. The answers to these three questions are urgently needed because the allegedly new and highly dangerous coronavirus has not caused any excess mortality anywhere in the world, and certainly not in Germany. But the anti-corona measures, the only basis of which are the results of the PCR test, which in turn are all based on the German Drosten test, as we shall see later, have in the meantime caused the loss of countless human lives and have destroyed the economic existence of countless companies and individuals all over the world. In Australia, for example, people are thrown into jail if they don't wear a mask or wear it properly as deemed by the authorities. And in the Philippines, people who don't wear a mask or don't wear it properly are shot in the head. Number one, summary of the facts as they arise today. The most important thing in a case in a court case, is to establish the facts, that is, to find out what really happened. This is because the application of the law always depends on the facts in question. If I want to prosecute someone for fraud, I can't do it by presenting the facts of a car accident. So what happened here regarding the alleged coronavirus pandemic? The facts set out below are largely the result of the work of the German Coronavirus Investigative Committee. This committee was founded on July the 10th by four lawyers in order to determine, by listening to the testimonies of international experts and other experts, what is true. Number one, how dangerous is the virus really? Number two, what is the significance of a positive PCR test? Number three, 
what collateral damage has been caused by the corona measures, both to the health of the world population and to the world economy. So we start with number one. What happened in May 2019 and then at the beginning of 2020? And what happened 12 years earlier with the swine flu? Question mark. In May 2019, the stranger, sorry, in May 2019, the stronger of the two parties that governed Gem Germany, as a grand coalition, the CDU, held a Congress on Global Health, apparently at the instigation of major players in the pharmaceutical and tech industries. At this Congress, the usual suspects, one might say, have given their speeches. There were Angela Merkel and the German Health Secretary Jens Spahn, but there were also other people who would not necessarily be expected to be present at such a gathering. Professor Drosten, virologist of the Charité Hospital in Berlin, Professor Wheeler, veterinarian and head of the Robert Koch Institute, RKI, as well as Mr. Tedros, philosopher and head of the WHO. Everyone gave speeches. Leading lobbyists from world's two largest health funds, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Wellcome Trust were also present and gave speeches. Less than a year later, these same people proclaimed the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic made sure mass PCR tests were used to prove mass infections with COVID-19 around the world and are now pushing for the invention of vaccines to sell around the world. These infections, or rather the positive results that PCR tests provided, in turn become the justification for global lockdowns, social distancing and mandatory masks. It is important to note at this point that the definition of a pandemic was changed 12 years earlier. Until then, a pandemic was considered a worldwide spreading disease, leading to many serious illnesses and deaths. Suddenly, and for unexplained reasons, it should have been just a worldwide disease. Many serious illnesses and many deaths were no longer needed to announce a pandemic. Due to this change, World Health Organization, which is closely intertwined with the global pharmaceutical industry, was uh, able to declare the swine flu pandemic in 2009, resulting in vaccines being manufactured and sold around the world, based on contracts that have been kept secret until today. These vaccines proved completely useless because swine flu eventually turned out to be a mild flu and never became the horrible plague that the pharmaceutical industry and its affiliated universities kept announcing that it would transform to. With millions of deaths that would have happened if people had not been vaccinated. These vaccines have led to serious health problems some 700 children in Europe have become incurably ill with narcolepsy, narcolepsy and are now severely disabled forever. Of course, there are other diseases that happen. Vaccines bought with millions of taxpayers' money had to be destroyed with even more taxpayers' money. Even then, during the swine flu, the German virologist Drosten was one of those who caused panic in the population by repeating over and over again that the swine flu would cause many hundreds of thousands, even millions of deaths across the country and the world. In the end, it was largely thanks to Dr. Wolfgang Wardarg and his efforts as a member of the German Bundestag and also a member of the Council of Europe that this hoax was brought to an end before it could lead to even more serious consequences. 
In March 2020, the German Bundestag announced an epidemic situation of national importance, again. In brackets, which is the equivalent of a pandemic. And on the basis of this, the lockdown with the suspension of all essential constitutional rights for an indefinite time. And there was only one opinion on which the federal government based its decision in an outrageous violation of the universally accepted principle, Audiator L. Altar et Altara Pars, which means that one must listen to the other party as well, the only person they heard was Drosten, that is, the very person whose horrible panic-inducing prognosis had proven catastrophically false 12 years earlier. We know this because an informant named David Cyber, a member of the Green Party, told us about it. It did so for the first time on 29th August 2020 in Berlin, in the context of an event in which Robert F. Kennedy Jr. participated. They both gave speeches, and he did so later in one of the sessions of our Corona Committee. The reason he did this was that he had become increasingly sceptical of the official narrative propagated by politicians and the mainstream media. He then embarked on an internet search to find out the opinions of other scientists. So he realized that there were a number of very well-known scientists who had a completely different opinion, which contradicted Mr. Drosten's horrible prognosis. They assumed, and still assume, that there was no disease beyond the sev severity of seasonal influenza, that population had already acquired cro cross or T-cell immunity against this alleged new virus, and that there was therefore no reasons for special measures, and certainly not for vaccinations. These scientists include Professor John Ionidis, of Stanford University of California, a specialist in statistics and epidemiology, as well as public health, and at the same time the most cited scientist in the world, as well as Professor Michael Levitt, Nobel Prize for winner in the chemistry, and also a biophysicist at Stanford University, German professors Karin Mulling, Sakharit Bhakti, and Knut Witkowski, as well as Stefan Hamburg, and now many, many other scientists and doctors around the world, including Dr. Mike Yedon. Dr. Mike Yedon is the former vice president and chief science officer of Pfizer, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. <clears throat> I'll talk about him some more later. In late March, early April 2020, Cyber approached the leadership of his Green Party with the knowledge he had accumulated and suggested that they pre present these other scientific views to the public and explain that contrary to, to Mr. Drosten's doomsday prophecies, there was no reason for the public to panic. Incidentally, Lord Sumption, who served as a judge in the British Supreme Court from 2012 to 2018, had done the same thing at the same time and had come to the same conclusion, that there was no concrete basis for the panic and no legal basis for corona measures. Likewise, the former president of the German Federal Constitutional Court expressed albeit with greater caution, serious doubts that the corona measures were constitutional. But instead of taking note of these other views and discussing them with David Cyber, the leadership of the Green Party declared that Drosten's panic measures were good enough for the Green Party. Remember, in brackets, they are not a member of the ruling coalition, but the opposition. Brackets close just as it had been good enough for the federal government as the basis for its lockdown decision. 
They later called David Cyber a conspiracy theorist without ever considering the content of his information and then stripped him of his warrants. Number two, the current real situation regarding the danger of the virus. The complete uselessness of PCR tests for the detection of infections and lockdowns based on non-existent infections. In the meantime, we know that health systems have never risked being overwhelmed by COVID. Co conversely, many hospitals remain empty to this day and some are now facing bankruptcy. The hospital ship Comfort, which at the same, which at the time was anchored in New York at the time and could have accommodated thousand patients has never accommodated more than 20 patients. There was no excess mortality. Studies by Professor Ioannidis and others have shown that Corona's mortality is equivalent to that of seasonal flu. Even the photos of Bergamo and New York, which served to show the world that the panic was a must, turned out to be deliberately misleading. The so-called panic document, which was written by German Interior Department, has leaked. Its confidential content shows beyond doubt that, in fact, the population has been deliberately panicked by politicians and the mainstream media. Accompanying irresponsible statements from the head of the RKI, Mr. Wheeler, who repeatedly announced that the corona measures must be followed unconditionally by the population without asking questions, proved that he followed the script to the letter. In his public statements, he continued to announce that the situation was very serious and threatening, although the figures compiled by his own institute showed the exact opposite. Among other things, the panic document required children to feel responsible for the painful death of their parents and grandparents if they do not follow the rules of the corona, that is, if they do not wash their hands constantly and if they are not away from their grandparents. A clarification. In Bergamo, the vast majority of deaths, 94% to be exact, turned out not to be the result of COVID-19, but rather the consequence of the government's decision to transfer the sick, brackets start, probably sick, with colds or seasonal flu, brackets close, from hospitals to nursing homes to make room in hospitals for all COVID patients who have never arrived. There, in nursing homes, they infected all the people with severely weakened immune systems, usually due to pre-existing medical conditions. In addition, a previously administered flu shot had further weakened the immune systems of people in nursing homes. In New York only, a few, but by far not all hospitals were crowded. Many people, most of whom, again elderly and with pre-existing serious medical conditions, and most, if it hadn't been for panic, would have stayed home to recover, rushing to the hospitals. Many of them there have been victims of healthcare-associated infections, or nosocomial infections on the one hand, and neglect on the other that is being put on a respirator rather than receiving oxygen sh through oxygen mask. Huh. Through oxygen, slang in the nose probably. Once again, to clarify, COVID-19 in the current state of affairs is a dangerous disease, just like seasonal flu is a dangerous disease. And of course, COVID-19, just like seasonal flu, can sometimes have a severe clinical course and sometimes kill patients. However, as the autopsies performed in Germany, in particular by the forensic scientist Professor Klaus Puschel, 
have shown the deaths he examined were almost all caused by serious pre-existing conditions and almost all the people who had died had died at a very old age just like in italy meaning they had lived beyond their average life expectancy in this context the following should also be mentioned the german rki had initially recommended strangely enough that no autopsies be performed and there are numerous credible reports that doctors and hospitals around the world have been paid for declaring a deceased person a COVID-19 victim, rather than writing the true cause of death on the certificate, such as heart attack or injury from weapon. Without the autopsies, we would never know that the vast majority of the alleged victims of COVID-19 died from completely different diseases, but not from COVID-19. The claim that the lockdown was necessary because there were so many infections with SARS-CoV-2 and why health systems would have been overwhelmed is wrong for three reasons, as we have learned from the hearings we conducted with the Corona Committee and from other data that have become available in the meantime. A. Little a. The lockdown was imposed when the virus was already retreating. When the lockdown was imposed, the alleged infection rates were already decreasing again. Little b. Virus protection already exists due to cross or T cell immunity. Other than that, there is already a T-cell or cross-cell immunity in the general population against coronaviruses that cause any flu or flu wave. This is true even though a slightly different strain of the coronavirus was at work this time. And this is because the body's immune system remembers every virus it has ever fought in the past. And from this experience, it also recognizes an alleged new, but still similar, strain of the corona family virus. Incidentally, this is how the PCR test for the detection of an infection was invented by the now infamous Professor Drosten. In early January 2020, based on this basic knowledge, Drosten developed his own PCR test which allegedly, allegedly detects a SARS-CoV-2 infection, never having seen the real Wuhan virus from China, only having learned from social media reports that something was going on in Wuhan, he began, he began tinkering on his computer with what would become his corona PCR test. For this, he used an old SARS virus hoping it was sufficiently similar to the alleged new coronavirus strain found in Wuhan. He then sent the result of this computer tinkering to China to determine if the victims of the alleged new cor coronavirus tested positive. They did, and this was enough for the WHO to raise the pandemic alarm and recommend the worldwide use of the Drosten PCR test for infection detection with a virus now called SARS-CoV-2. The opinion and advice of Drosten was that this was to be, he stressed again, the only source for the German government when it announced the, lockdown, nay, the, the lockdowns, as well as the rules for social distancing and the obligation to wear masks. And this, it must also be stressed once again, Germany has apparently become the centre of particularly massive pressure from the par pharmaceutical and technology industry because the world, with reference to the supposedly disciplined Germans, would have to do as the Germans do to survive the pandemic. Little c. PCR testing is used based on false claims not based on scientific facts regarding infections. In the meantime, we have learned that these PCR tests, contrary to what Dr. Drosten Wheeler 
and the WHO recommend it. They do not provide any indication of an infection with any virus, let alone an infection with SARS-CoV-2. Not only are PCR tests not expressly approved for diagnostic purposes, as correctly stated on leaflets provided with these tests, and as the inventor of the PCR test, Carrie Mullis has repeatedly pointed out. They are simply unable to diagnose any disease. This is contrary to the claims of Trosten, Wheeler and the WHO, which have been making since the proclamation of the pandemic a positive PCR test result marketing. A positive PCR test result does not mean that an infection is present. If someone tests positive, it does not mean that they are infected with something or anything, let alone a contagious virus SARS-CoV-2. The United States CDC itself says so, and I quote directly from page 38 of one of its publications on coronavirus and PCR tests dated 13th of July 2020. Viral RNA detection may not indicate the presence of infectious viruses or that 2019 little n big C little o big V is the causative agent of clinical symptoms. The performance of this test has not been established for monitoring treatment of 2019 NCOV infection. This test cannot rule out diseases caused by other bacterial or viral, viral pathogens. It is still unclear whether there has ever been a scientifically correct isolation of the Wuhan virus, so that we know exactly what we are looking for when we test it, especially since the virus, just like in influenza viruses, mutates rapidly. PCR swabs require one or two sequences of a molecule that is invisible to the human eye and therefore needs to be amplified over many cycles to make it visible. Anything over 35 cycles is, as reported by the New York Times and others, considered completely unreliable and scientifically unjustifiable. However, Drusten's test, as well as the WHO, recommended tests that followed his lead to be set to 45 cycles. This may be due to a desire to produce as many positive results as possible and thus, and thus provide the basis for the false assumption that large numbers of infections have been detected. Question mark. The test cannot distinguish between inactive and reproductive, little m, big R, big N, big A, mRNA. This means that a positive result can occur because the test detects, for example, a fragment of debris, a fragment of a molecule which cannot signal anything other than the immune system of the person tested has won a battle against the common cold in the past. Drosten himself also stated in an interview with a German business magazine in 2014, at that time concerning the alleged detection of a MERS virus infection, presumably with the help of the PCR test, that these PCR tests are so highly sensitive that even very healthy and non-infectious people can test positive. At that time, he also became aware of the powerful role of panic and alarmist mass media, 
as we will see at the end of the following quote. Drosten said, If, for example, such a pathogen is found on a nurse's nasal mucosa for a day or so without her getting sick, then it's suddenly a case of MERS. This could also explain the exp explosion of the number of cases in Saudi Arabia. Furthermore, the media has exaggerated the situation, he said. Brackets. <coughs> Sorry. The quote ends. Has he forgotten this, or is he deliberately hiding it in the coronavirus context? Because the corona is a very profitable business opportunity for the pharmaceutical industry as a whole. And for Mr. Alford Land, his co-author in many studies, and also a PCR test manufacturer? Question mark. In my opinion, it is completely unlikely that in 2020 he forgot what he knew about PCR tests and told a business magazine in 2014. In short, this test cannot detect any infection, contrary to, to all the false claims that it can. An infection, a so-called active infection, requires that the virus, or rather, rather a fragment of a molecule that can be a virus, is not just somewhere, for example, in a person's throat, without causing any harm. Brackets, it would be a cold. Brackets close. Rather, an active infection requires the virus to penetrate cells, replicate there, and cause symptoms such as headache or sore throat. Only then is a person truly infected in the sense of an active infection, because only then is a person contagious, that is, capable of infecting others. Until then, it is completely harmless to both the host and all other people that the host comes into contact with. Again, this means that positive test results contrary to all other claims, for example by Drosten, Wheeler or the WHO, mean nothing with respect to infections, as even CDC knows the above. Meanwhile, a number of highly respected scientists around the world are assuming there has never been a corona pandemic, only a PCR testing pandemic. This is the conclusion reached by many German scientists such as Professor Bagde, Reis, Merling, Hockertz, Wallach, and many others, including the aforementioned Professor John Ioannidis and Nobel laureate Professor Michael Levitt of Stanford University. The most recent opinion is that of the aforementioned Dr. Mike Yedon, former Vice President and Chief Science Officer of Pfizer, who held this position for 16 years. He and his co-authors, all well-known scientists, published a scientific article in September 2020 and wrote a corresponding journal article on September 20, year 2020, among other things he and they state. Quote starts, We are basing our government policy, our economic policy, and the policy of limiting fundamental rights allegedly on completely wrong data and assumptions about the coronavirus. If it were not for the test results that are constantly reported in the media, the pandemic would have ended because nothing really happened. Of course, there are some serious individual cases of the disease, but there are also some in every flu epidemic. There was a real wave of disease in March and April, but everything has since returned to normal. Positive results rise and fall again and again, depending on how many tests are done, but the real cases of the, of the disease are over. We cannot speak of a second wave. 
the alleged new, sorry, the quote ended. The alleged new cap of corona or coronavirus is, Dr. Yedan continues, just a new type of coronavirus that has long been known. There are at least four coronaviruses that are endemic and cause some of the common colds we experience, especially in the winter. They all have striking sequence similarity to the coronavirus, and since the human immune system recognizes the similarity to the virus that has now allegedly been recently discovered, a T-cell immunity has long existed in this regard. 30% of the population had this immunity even before the alleged new virus appeared. Therefore, it is enough for so-called herd immunity that 15 to 25 percent of the population is infected with the alleged new virus to stop the further spread of the virus and this has been the case. Regarding PCR testing, Yedon writes in an article titled quote starts lies, damned lies and health statistics, the deadly danger of false positives Quote ends, that was the, na the name of the title, dated September 2020. And the quote starts The likelihood of an apparently positive case being a false positive is understood to be between 89 to 94 percent, or almost certain. Bracket, uh, sorry, quote closes. Dr. Yedon. Bracket starts, in agreement with professors of immunology, Kamera from Germany, Kappel from the Netherlands and Cahill from Ireland, as well as microbiologist Dr. Arve from Austria, all of whom testified before the German Corona Commission, brackets close, explicitly point out that a positive test does not mean that an intact virus has been found. The authors explain that what the PCR test actually measures is quote starts simply the presence of partial RNA sequences present in the intact virus which could be a dead piece of virus that cannot make the subject sick, cannot be transmitted and cannot make anybody sick. Quote ends. Due to the complete inadequacy of the test for detecting infectious diseases, bracket start, it tested positive in goats, sheep, papaya, and even chicken wings. Brackets close. Oxford, Oxford professor Carl Hennigan, director of the Center of for Evidence-Based Medicine writes that the virus will not go away if this testing practice will be continued, but would always be falsely detected in much of what is tested. Lockdowns, as Yedon and his colleague found, don't work. Sweden, with its approach, and Britain, with its rigid lockdown, for example, have completely comparable disease and mort mortality statistics. The same has been discovered by United States scientists regarding different United States. It makes no difference to disease incidents whether a state implements a lockdown or not. Regarding Professor Neil Ferguson of Imperial College London and his completely bogus computer models that warn of millions of deaths, he states that no serious scientist gives any validity to Ferguson's model. He points out with thinly wheeled contempt. Quote starts, It is important that you know that most scientists do not accept that brackets Ferguson's model, brackets close, was even vaguely right. But the government is still tied to the model. Quote ends. Ferguson predicted 40,000 corona deaths in Sweden by May, 
and hundred thousand by June, but remain but it remained at five point eight thousand, which Swedish authorities say equates to a mild flu. If PCR tests had not been used as a diagnostic tool for corona infections, there would have been no pandemic and no lockdowns, but everything would have been perceived as a wave of medium or light flu, these scientists conclude. Dr. Yedon, in his piece, Lies, Damn, Lies and Health Statistics, The Deadly Danger of False Positive, writes. The quote starts. This test is fatally flawed and must be immediately withdrawn and never used again in this setting unless proven that it has been fixed. Quote ends. And towards the end of that article, he writes... I explained how a hopeless diagnostic test has been and continues to be used, not for diagnosing diseases, but apparently just to create fear. Number three. The current and real situation regarding severe damage caused by lockdowns and other measures. Another detailed document recently re leaked, written by a German official of the Department of the Interior, responsible for risk assessment and protection of the population from risks. It is now called a false alarm document. This paper comes to the conclusion that there was no and still is no sufficient evidence for serious health risks to the population, as stated by Drosten, Wheeler and the WHO. But, says the author, there is a lot of evidence that the measures taken cause enormous damage to the health and economy of the population, which he then describes in detail in this article. This, he concludes, will lead to very high damage claims for which the government will be held accountable. Now, this has come true, but the author of this article has been suspended. More and more scientists, but also lawyers, recognize that as a result of the deliber deliberate alarmism, and the corona measures made possible by panic, democracy is in great danger of being replaced by totalitarian fascist models. As I mentioned above, in Australia, people who don't wear masks, brackets start, which more and more studies show to be dangerous to health, brackets close, or who don't wear them properly are arrested, handcuffed, and thrown in jail. In the Philippines they run the risk of being killed. But even in Germany and other civilized countries, children are taken away from their parents. If they don't comply with the quarantine regulations, distance regulations or mask wearing regulations. According to psychologists and psychotherapists who testified before the Corona Committee, all children are traumatized, with the worst psychological consequences yet to be expected in the medium and long term. In Germany alone, 500,000 to 800,000 bankruptcies of small and medium sized enterprises which form the backbone of the economy, are expected in this autumn. This will result in incalculable tax losses and incalculable long-term social security money transfers for, among other things, unemployment benefits. Since virtually everyone in the meantime is beginning to understand the full and devastating impact of the completely unsubstantiated corona measures, I will refrain from detailing this further.
the second part of this article is called Summary of Legal Consequences. And it starts like this. The hardest part of a lawyer's job is establishing the true facts. Not applying the legal rules to these facts. Unfortunately, a German lawyer doesn't learn this in law school, but his Anglo-American counterparts receive the necessary training for this in their law schools. And probably for this reason, but also because of the much more pronounced independence of the Anglo-American judiciary, the Anglo-American law of proof is much more effective in practice than the German one. A court can only correctly decide a legal dispute if it has previously correctly determined the facts, which is not possible without examining all the evidence. On the basis of the facts summarized above, in particular those established with the help of the work of the German Corona Committee, the legal assessment is, in reality, simple for all civil systems regardless of whether these legal systems are based on civil law, which follows Roman law more closely, or if they are based on Anglo-American law, which is only loosely related to Roman law. Number one, unconstitutionality of the measures. Unconstitutionality of the measures. Some professors of German law, including Professor King, King Green, Merswick, Jungl, Jungbluth and Wosgrau, have stated in written reports or interviews, bracket start, in line with the serious doubts expressed by the former president of the Federal Constitutional Court, regarding the constitutionality of the measures taken against the corona epidemic, lack its close, that these measures lack a sufficient factual basis and are also without a sufficient legal basis, and are therefore unconstitutional and must be repealed immediately. Recently, a judge, Thurston Schleif, publicly stated that the German judiciary, just like the general public, has been so panicked that it is no longer able to administer justice properly. He says the courts, quote starts, have acted all too quickly with coercive measures, which for millions of people across Germany represent a massive suspension of their constitutional rights. Quote, ends. He stresses the German citizens, quote, starts, are experiencing the most severe constraint of their rights since the founding of the Federal Republic of Germany in 1949. Brackets, sorry, quote, ends. Federal and state governments have intervened to contain the coronavirus pandemic. Quote starts massively and in part threatening the very existence of the country. Quote ends as defined by the constitutional rights of the people. Number two, fraud intentional infliction of harm and crimes against humanity. Under the rules of criminal law, falsifying PCR tests or intentional misinterpretations, as has been done by Drosten and Wheeler, as well as by the WHO, can be assessed as fraud. Under the rules of civil law, this results in intentional infliction of damages. The German professor of civil law, Martin Swab, argues this in public interviews. As extended legal opinion of about 
180 pages has he expressed himself on the subject as no other legal scholar has done so far and in particular he has pro provided detailed account of the complete failure of the mainstream media to report the real facts of this so-called pandemic. Drosten, Wheeler and Tedros of WHO all knew based on their experience or the experience of their institutions that PCR tests cannot provide any information about infections. But they have stated time and time again to the general public that they can and all their counterparts repeat it in the world. And everyone knew and accepted that on the basis of their recommendations. The, gov the governments of the world would decide the lockdowns, the rules for social distancing and the mandatory use of masks the latter representing a very serious health hazard, shown by more and more studies and scientists. According to the rules of civil law, all those who have been halved, harmed by these lockdowns, induced by the PCR tests, are entitled to receive full compensation for their losses. In particular, there is a duty to compensate, that is, a duty to compensate for the loss of profits suffered by companies and self-employed workers as a result of the lockdowns and other measures. In the meantime, however, the anti-corona measures have caused and continue to cause so devastating damage to the health and economy of the peoples of the world that the crimes committed by Drosten, Wheeler and the WHO must, legally, must be legally qualified as actual crimes against humanity, as defined in Section 7 of the International Criminal Code. Part 3. Class action as the best way to compensatory damages and political consequences. The so-called class action is based on English law and exists today in the United States and Canada. Allows a court to allow a claim for damages to be tried as a class action at the request of a plaintiff if, as a result of a damaging event, a large number of people suffer the same type of damage. Differently worded, a judge may allow a class lawsuit to continue if common issues of law and fact form the vital component of the lawsuit. Component of the lawsuit. Here, the common questions of law and fact revolve around PCR-based test lockdowns around the world and their consequences. Just as Volkswagen diesel passenger cars were working products but were defected due to a so-called flawed device because they did not comply with emission standards, so too are PCR tests, which are perfectly good products in other contexts are defective products when it comes of the diagnosis of infections. If an American or Canadian company or an American or Canadian individual decides to sue these individuals in the United States or Canada for damages, the court called to resolve this dispute may, upon request, allow this claim to be tried as a class action. If this happens, all interested parties around the world will be informed through publications in the main media and will thus have the opportunity to participate in this collective action within a certain period of time to be determined by the court. 
it should be emphasized that no one should participate in the class action, but any injured party can join the class. The advantage of the class action is that only one trial is required, namely to prove the complaint of a plaintiff representative who is affected in a manner typical of everyone else in the class. This is in the first place cheaper, second, faster than hundreds of thousands or more individual cases, and thirdly, it imposes fewer burdens on the courts. Fourth, as a rule, it allows for a much more precise examination of the allegations that would be possible in the context of hundreds of thousands, or more likely in this corona context, even millions of individual lawsuits. In particular, it is possible to apply the well-established and proven Anglo-American law of the preliminary pre presentation of evidence before the trial. This requires that all evidence relevant to the determination of the cause be put on the table. In contrast to the typical situation of German lawsuits, with a structural imbalance, that is cases involving a consumer on the one hand and a powerful company on the other, the refusal or even destruction of evidence is not without consequences. Rather, the party that denies or even destroys the evidence loses the, the cause. Here in Germany, a group of civil liability lawyers meet to help their clients with damage recovery. They have provided all relevant information and forms for German plaintiffs to both estimate how much harm they have suffered and to join the group or class of plaintiffs who will later join the class action when it goes forward in Canada or the United States. Initially, the group of lawyers had considered collecting and handling the damage claims of other non-German plaintiffs, but this provided unmanageable. However, through an international network of lawyers that is expanding by the day, the German lawyers group provides all relevant information, including expert opinion and expert testimony, free of charge to all colleagues in all other countries, including expert opinion and expert testimony showing that PCR tests cannot detect infections. They also provide them with all relevant information on how to prepare and group their clients claims for damages, so that they too can enforce their clients' claims in the courts of their home countries, or as part of the class action as explained above. These scandalous corona facts, gathered mainly by the Corona Committee and summarized above, are the same facts that will soon be proven to be true in one court or in many courts around the world. These are the facts that will remove the masks from the faces of all those responsible for these crimes. To politicians who believed those corrupt people, these facts are offered here as a lifeline that can help you readjust your course of action and start the long overdue public scientific discussion to take down those charlatans and criminals. That was the last sentence of this magnificent article, decision, by the lawyer Rainer Fulmush. The bar member in Germany and California for 26 years. <clears throat> I will allow myself now to have 
a brief impression of this magnificent work and where it fits into the puzzle of the current situation in the world. As I am the highest judge of World Indigenous Human Love Order Court of Godland, and together with Leif of Godland, we are the indigenous self-proclaimed rulers of the world. And we feel this weight on our shoulders now to fix this systemic breakdown of humanity because that is exactly what it is. It is a breakdown. It is a designed and well-managed breakdown with a goal to merge and force humanity into a different system and structure that will bring humanity to human too. Transhuman artificial intelligence, hybrid reality that will probably end existence of humanity. As we have discovered that already in 2030 it is planned that most of humanity is sterilized with these microwave gadgets that people are wearing now and using as modems and what not. So they are sterilizing humanity, they are poisoning humanity, they are fooling humanity in all depopulation matrix ways. And they have all the resources to do it. They are employing all the humanity to do it. And uh, <clears throat> we have the solution. We have the reset of Godland to love order. And that is done through establishment of new financial monetary system that is based in wooden coins that everybody creates for their family themselves. And tally sticks. Tally sticks were used for thousand years before Rothschilds burned them down. We return to them, and we, <clears throat> and the base of all financial system are your own checks that every human or the guardian of a human fills each month to show that they are alive and they need their resources that they are entitled to as members of human humanity. That's how we solve it in a very simple way. And it's not complicated, it's beautiful. And it's based on world indigenous runes, and you can see this all. We have the statutes ready on loveorder.info webpage. I just wanted to add uh, that you have to make your own indigenous courts. You have to hold your own courts. You have to fill in your ledger books with your coins and tally sticks. You have to hold your accounting, you have to hold your courts. And it's all based on you creating these indigenous societies again. And the easy way to do it is by 
creating agreements with us, rulers of Godland. You feel here the creators of your annual amount, <coughs> the quota that you decide in your indigenous society, how much resources you give to your people each month, and coupons for food, because there will be harsh times now. We are going for a reset one way or another. And this is the way to protect your families and tribes and nations. You fill here the quota. Name, address. Here you write your indigenous society's name. And the chief of indigenous society signs it. And you write to us. Every month you send uh, <coughs> the scanned accounting of your checks to us into the bank of Godland. And you bring these checks to your economy chief, to local council, and you demand them to convert them into the currency they are imposing on you without agreement with you. Because the currency is a Val Utan. As central banking started in Sweden, Val Utan is the name of currencies. Val Utan means without choice. Choice without. Val is choice. Utan is without. That's what it means. And um, we, right now, under these circumstances of extreme danger for humanity, we impose Val Utan currency that is called World Indigenous Runes, W I R. Where. And by using that, you're using a system of love order that we promise we will establish. Me, Dita of Godland, and Leif of Godland. You can find us on loveorder.info. And about this article that I read for you, that is so magnificent. I still see a couple of dangers that we have to see not happening. And uh, one of them I will name. And, and that is the danger of, it's quite obvious that these current commercial companies that are called states, but are not states. They are not states of the people, as people are not shareholders in them. They are private companies and the shareholders of those private companies are unnamed, invisible, covert group. All of our states have been stolen from us. And now these companies will be bankrupted by this process. That's what's going on, I think. And even this wonderful process um, that Rare is, Rainer Fulmish is describing here. So, des describing a very valuable order of things, but while we haven't proclaimed our take back of our states in a way that everybody would get it in the management of states, that the indigenous people and the citizens and humans within each state are taking back their resources and their states 
and they are now stakeholders not only but even stockholders of these states so they can do this they can bankrupt these corporations and they can close them and if you just go and do this court case without taking back your states they will be doing it faster closing this because there will be so many people who will be claiming their damages that these corporations will go bankrupt and so please start using these checks that's a fast solution take back your countries and that we can do through indigenous societies that are assemblies within natural law within divine gods of love peace and welfare realm and we love you and that this true love is the proof that the gods of love peace and welfare are still alive and that the darkness powers will not win over us and we will save the next generations of all loving systems that have to be preserved by us the responsible the wise the loyal the loving so i do promise to you to establish love order on this wonderful earth and to love and cherish you and everybody even the perpetrators because within love order there is a different type of jurisdiction it's about the rights of godlanders and all people will be found the best possible solutions for their recovery the punishment is not our goal our goal is to create love order on earth and that's in the hands of each and every one of us let's do it let's create the love order we are the children of gods of love peace and welfare thanks so much for being with me and may the gods be with us and they are when we are with the gods of love peace and welfare <laughs>